Greetings folks, my name is Bob and I review laptops and HP was kind enough to send me their Envy 17T for review. No, I do not get to keep this laptop, but I wish I could. As a family man, I want to share with you why here in just a hot second. Now I typically review gaming laptops and those that are new to the channel looking for this information here may find this laptop review to suit them very well based on what kind of laptop this is. But many individuals out there that have been following me for some time realize this. This is not a gaming laptop, so it's not going to be reviewed as a gaming laptop. That's not fair to the laptop, and that's not fair to the consumer that's looking for a laptop like this, as they're likely looking for a laptop that's, you said it, not a gaming laptop. So this is my in-depth review and mindset of what I think about this Envy 17T. Now the 17T is a 17 inch laptop. It's in the name and it's all aluminum and it is heavy. It is over six pounds. It's stout, it is durable. Because of that, I can't imagine people wanting to carry this across college campus. And if you do, more power to you, rock on for that. Just understand that Big laptops like this, where do they belong? Probably in the household. So who's this for? As a family man, I've been using this for over three weeks. I have talked to many friends of mine that are in their 40s. They have kids. They use laptops like this as a family laptop. Now, I don't know if HP intended on making this laptop for that. I've never seen it even advertised as that. And I'm also not saying that that's all it's good for. Okay, after you see what I'm about to provide here today, you'll know if this laptop is right for you. But from my point of view, this laptop makes the most sense in households where there's families and people just sort of share this laptop. And for that reason alone, I think this is a great value at the current price of $849. Now, everything inside this laptop at the base model, I'm gonna put right here before you. We have the 10th generation, four core, eight thread Intel chip, very power efficient here. We get the NVIDIA MX330 graphics card, not a powerhouse, but you can game on if you respect some settings. Stay tuned towards the gaming section because there could be some issues that you may need to be aware of. You've got very fast memory that is upgradable. You've got the network interface card that's in 9560 for 10 extra dollars. You can upgrade that to Wi-Fi 6. You've got an M.2 drive, a two and a half inch drive, so plenty of storage. And the base model here comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD. This is a pretty nice value just based on the durability, the 17 inch, all aluminum, just a very rugged laptop. And I don't find too many equals out there as far as what this laptop can offer to perhaps that family or individual. Now, carrying this laptop around the house is not a big deal, and I personally wouldn't mind carrying this with me on the go, but I can't expect a lot of people that are willing to carry a six-pound laptop around with them on the job or across college campus. But as a result, using it at home has been great. I can go out on my porch or deck and just sort of take it with me leisurely on short trips, and as a result, easily expect around four and a half to five hours of runtime out of that 55-watt-hour battery. Now, fortunately, the 90 watt power supply that it will come with will fast charge this laptop all the way to an additional 50% of battery life within about 45 minutes. So if you do take this to work and you need to plug this in during the lunch hour, only you know if that's a versatile solution for you, but at least fast charge is included with the 17T and I do find that handy in certain situations. Now, port selection. On the left-hand side, we've got a USB, an HDMI 2.0, a combo microphone and headphone jack, and this USB-C port that will do pretty much everything but Thunderbolt 3. It has power delivery 3.0, you've got data transfer, you can do HDMI, you can do display port. This is a very accommodating port. It is everything but a Thunderbolt 3 port. On the right-hand side, you have your barrel power port, two more USBs, and an SD card reader. Now, as we start to approach inside the business end of the laptop, there's going to be some pros and cons in here, with the first one being a bit of a con. Now, just a pet peeve of some people, including myself, one finger or thumb opening is just not accommodating on this laptop. The hinge design is a little stiff. 
However, the way the lid is designed, it does prop the laptop up a little bit for nice keyboard ergonomics and better airflow. But as a result, speaking of airflow, the exhaust of the laptop comes out at the hinge, which means those that want to use this as a docking station in clamshell mode, meaning you close the laptop, connect your accessories and set it off to the side, please don't do that with this laptop as it won't be able to breathe and it will indeed overheat. Inside the 17T, we have a fingerprint reader, which will come standard for Windows Hello, so you can log in with your finger. And I like the way that this is placed versus many manufacturers placing this on the trackpad. So therefore, at nighttime or low lit environments, this is a lot easier to find. So nice job there, HP. The trackpad itself, while using Windows Precision drivers and it gestures very nicely, it is still made of plastic. And that kind of throws you off a little bit because the build quality here is so high end. And then you remember, oh yeah, I just paid $849 for this. I guess a plastic trackpad is acceptable. Click symmetry is good. There's a nice chrome bezel around there as an accent. It looks good. It works well. It's just not glass. And ultimately, I shouldn't expect it to be at this price. The keyboard is awesome, okay? It features a number pad. It's just a really good keyboard. It's easy to use. The function keys work solo and you don't have to press the actual function key tied to F1, F2, you know, for brightness, keyboard brightness, um, speaker audio. It's just an easy laptop to use. I was able to let my son, daughter, wife use this and they didn't have to come to me and ask me how to operate a particular action. They just got it right away. And that is a huge deal that I think a lot of people overlook, but if you're looking for this laptop, I really think you can appreciate that. At least I hope you can appreciate. But one thing you might not be able to appreciate, at least I didn't, is that the silver keys, while they look nice, and the white backlighting also looks nice, means that under bright lit circumstances, being outside in the direct sunlight, you can't really see what the keys are, okay? Now, if you know a keyboard like it's the back of your hand and you don't need to look at it, then you're gonna be just fine. But if you need to look down at the keyboard for something, you may actually have to position your head in a certain way to block some of the direct sunlight before you can actually see a letter or a function that you're looking for. It's just something that very few people may encounter, but it was something that I had noticed and I'm just letting you know. Okay, so that's it for that. What about, what about the star of the show here? My opinion, the display. Now there's three different displays. This is the full HD, this is IPS. It was 99% standard RGB, 324 nits, but it is glossy. Now inside your house, mm, mm, it looks really good. But at 324 nits, it's not bright enough to deal with the direct sunlight. There you really need to be 400 nits, 500 nits would be ideal. So if you use this outside, respect the sunlight in the shade in order to get the most enjoyment from this particular display. But I did say it is the star of the show and it is very color accurate and it is very nice to look at under the indoor environment. And for an extra $40, you can make this a touch screen. And for a few extra $100, if you want the 4K Ultra HD, HP's got your back there. Feel free to tick that box and enjoy a 4K screen. Now, expect battery life to take a hit, maybe 45 to 60 minutes should you wish to go 4K. In my opinion, on a 17-inch laptop, full HD, family laptop for everyone to use, this was just a really good solution, and that is why I spec'd it the way that it was. Now, given the current times in this world, having a webcam and microphone for those working at home, like this guy right here for my main occupation, has been very nice, and this one does not disappoint. Have a look and listen. Okay, HP, two times in a row now. I have reviewed your laptops and your 720p webcam and microphone, I think, just tops the charts. Now, just... Keep doing this if you want to increase the resolution. I won't be upset about that either, but ultimately, I'm very pleased with this. Honestly, I, I, could, I could daily drive this. I need that webcam for my main occupation. I have used it earlier today. Keyboard strokes sound just like this. The air conditioning is running 15 feet from the built-in microphone here, and I don't think you're going to pick it up. So all in all, I dig this. Well done. Now this Bang & Olufsen speaker audio, 
piping out of the top here is spectacular. Hands down, the best laptop speaker audio that I have heard this year, and the best speaker audio that I have heard on a laptop costing under $1,000 in my life. Check this out. Last but not least, let's talk about fan acoustics and gaming. First of all, the fan acoustics are always great. It idle, it's just, it's just barely on. It is so, so nice to use. When it was plugged in, unplugged, outside, in the office, in my studio, where I do not have any acoustic foam, so the audio from my voice and everything just sort of travels really far. It's good. It is really good. But what about at load? When you're gaming and the CPU and GPU are working really hard, that's probably when you're going to find a laptop like this being at its loudest. Check this out. So those fan acoustics at load are spectacular, but the gaming performance just isn't. And it's not trying to be a gaming laptop. Now, sure, you could play Minecraft on here, get 60 frames a second, it gets some pretty good enjoyment out of it, especially if you've never gamed on a computer before. This could be pretty nice. But if you want to engage the CPU and GPU a little bit more heavily and you're going to play maybe some Overwatch online, anything that's even remotely taxing, which by no means is that game a strenuous title to play, now you're going to see the CPU start to fall on its face at around 900 megahertz. And unfortunately, the CPU was locked out of all third-party software, so any tuning that I would normally feature in my laptop reviews is just not accessible for this particular laptop and CPU. Is that going to be a problem? Sure, for the gamer, but again, this is not a gaming laptop. Now, the GPU has a thermal throttle limitation of 67 degrees Celsius. We can bypass that using ASUS GPU tweak to 94 degrees Celsius. That will increase the decibels of the fan acoustics by about two or three decibels, and it can yield some more performance as long as you are respecting the title, the settings, and everything that you're using. Nonetheless, it didn't stop or eliminate the CPU from throttling down to 900 megahertz and causing some performance discrepancies. And I'll say this again, this is not a gaming laptop. But I figured these were some things that some of you that are just a fan of this channel might want to know about just for fun. And any further details that I will be offering about that subject will be in the description below. So all in all, I do recommend this particular laptop for that family. You want a durable machine, something that can be carried around the house. Maybe it just sits there in a small office or a nook or somewhere in the corner of a kitchen somewhere and you just walk by, you grab it, you do some work, you put it back. I find it to be a very practical device for that individual. And somebody as old as I am who is married, I have kids, all of my friends are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. This is a very relatable device for them too. And therefore, the people that I know in my world, in my reality, physically, this is also a great device for. But as far as the people that I have established on Bob of All Trades, this laptop may be a little bit confusing for you. But understand, this laptop isn't for you. It's not a gaming laptop. This is the HP Envy 17T. It does a lot of good things, and at $849, I think it's a pretty spectacular value. All right, folks, that's going to do it. I'm Bob of all trades. Hopefully you liked this video, and I'll see you soon.